Hello all. Uh, this is Professor Prasad Kulkarni. I'm glad you could join for today's session. So today we are going to see uh, the introduction to FEA, that is finite element analysis. So now see what are the uh, contents of uh, today's session. So we are we are going to see uh, what is FEA, exactly the definition of FEA. Then is there any difference between FEA and FEM, that is finite element analysis and the finite element method. Then we are going to see the different types of analysis. And after that, uh, the FEA through the eyes of a design engineer. And in the later slides, we are going to see advantages and disadvantages of FEA. And at the end, we are going to see what are the different uh, softwares which can be used for solving FEA. Now let us start. <clears throat> what is FEA? Yes, obviously finite element analysis is FEA, but now we have to define it. So how we can define? The finite element method is a numerical technique for finding approximate solutions to boundary value problems for partial differential equations. Now this uh, definition might look like somewhat sophisticated and uh, you might find quite hard to digest this definition. So let us simplify this definition a little bit in simple terms. FEM is a method for dividing up a very complicated problem into small, small elements that can be solved in relation to each other. So basically a complex problem we just break it down into small parts and these small parts then assemble together so that we can get the result of the final, whatever the complicated problem it is. So just to make it easy, we just divide it. Uh, in many terms, we call it as discretization. So making small, small parts. The main domain is divided into small, small and finite subdomains. So that is what the basic intention behind finite element method is. Now, like I said, is there any difference between FEA and FEM? Many times, many students get confused in between these two terms, whether these are same or these are different. So the direct answer for this is no. These are not different. They are one and the same. There is no difference in between these two. Then why this confusion is coming up? Why the students are getting confused in between these two? The direct and easy answer for that question is the term FEA is very, very popular in industries, whereas FEM is most commonly used in universities and colleges. So here you will get from academics, FEM is coming, and from industry, FEA, that is finite element, analysis is coming. So there is no confusion in between, in between these two terms. Along with that, there is a small confusion between one more term, that is FMEA, that is failure mode and effect analysis. Some might get confused in between these two terms. So this is a completely different term. It has nothing to do with FMA, uh, FEA or FEM. So broadly telling the difference uh, in between these two is FEA is required in design or uh, R&D department, whereas FMEA is required in all the departments of any organization. Now, we are talking about analysis. Yes, the name, finite element analysis. So we must know what is analysis. Now, there are broadly four types of analysis. So we'll see each type briefly in the coming slides. The first type of analysis is structural analysis. Now, this picture will be telling you what the structural analysis. This is a structure, a bridge structure you can see in the analysis. It is used, uh, it is uh, structural analysis post-processing is done by using some of the software tools which, we, which I'm going to discuss in the last slide. So now, for structural analysis, uh, different models are used. 
the model could be linear or non-linear. And why we need those models? To check the plastic deformity and uh, elastic capabilities for when we use a linear model, then the plastic deformity we get. And when we use nonlinear models, the elastic capabilities uh, in, in, in sense of stresses and stress, uh, stresses and strain we get. So uh, this is structural analysis. Now coming to the next part, next type of analysis that is vibrational analysis. The name will be giving you idea that the design engineer has to design the structure so that it should sustain the vibrational forces acting on that structure. To test the material against random vibration, shock, and impact. So designer has to take these things in consideration. While doing so, the designer should be aware of natural frequency and resonance. So what is it? Whenever the frequency reaches near to the natural frequency or it matches the natural frequency, the resonance occurs. Whenever the resonance occurs, there is a turbulence. There is violent vibrations occurring and because of that, there is a possibility that the structure will get failed. So the designer has to take care of these things. So here also, FEA plays a vital role. Now moving on. Thermal analysis is the next type of analysis. This picture is very much familiar to many of the people. That is, it's a disc brake of a bike. The area which, which you can see in red, that is this particular area, the area red indicates the thermal stresses at that point are too high. So this area might get failed if the temperature goes on increasing, if the temperature exceeds its limit. So this, uh, for that we need thermal analysis. The models uh, which we use for thermal analysis. Uh, sometimes this includes thermal conductivity or sometimes they include thermal fluid dynamics of material or structure. Again, thermal analysis is divided into two types. That is steady state and unsteady state. The properties which do not change with respect to time will be falling under steady state type and the properties which Changes with respect to time will be calling as unsteady or transient state. Yeah. So this is the third type. Now moving on, that is fourth, fatigue analysis. Fatigue analysis, you can see this is a connecting rod. Connecting rod is a dynamic component. So there will be some continuous loading occurring on that, the cycling loading will be occurring. So because of that, fatigue stresses are occurring. And there is a possibility, you can see at the neck area, the red region here, if it exceeds this permissible stress limit, the failure will be at this point. So for that, we need fatigue analysis to predict the life of material or structure by showing the effect of cyclic loading. So for that, we need fatigue analysis. Now, like I said, to the eyes of the design engineer. So in which ways the FEA is going to help a design engineer? FEA easily applied to complex irregular shape when the geometry is irregular and with the boundary conditions somewhat in complex in nature. So in these cases, FEA comes into picture and helps the design engineer. FEA applicable to steady state, not just steady state, but transient and eigenvalue problems also. So the range of problem is quite high. Linear and non-linear problems can easily be solved in FEA. Now, which could be the problems which uh, we can solve by using FEA? A variety of problems such as fluid mechanics, solid mechanics, electromagnetic problems, chemical problems, thermal, acoustic. These are just to name a few. These are the types of problems which can be solved by using FEA. Now moving on. What are the advantages of FEA? 
if we can handle complex problem like we said in the previous slide complex geometry complex boundary conditions which can be solved by using fba and it can handle anisotropic and non homogeneous material if we are given with somewhat complex geometry yes we can take it also if we we are given with uh, composite materials that is it is non homogeneous in nature and isotropic in nature so these problems can easily be solved by using fba also it enables programming computer programming there are so many equations which is uh, which will be uh, needed for solving any kind of problem so if you keep on solving this manually it will take time but if you are uh, given with some programming some codes if you develop so those codes can be taken and those can be solved the iterative methods could be there so those can be solved quite easily by this method because we are here uh, the computer programming can be uh, easily uh, available for fea now along with the advantages definitely there will be some disadvantages of fea so which are those firstly definitely one thing is coming that is more computational time so just to go back to the uh, previous slide that is geometry is complex boundary conditions are complex anisotropic non homogeneous all these things if we are taking at once and the equations required for that since it's a numerical method it's a completely numerical method so many equations we are deriving together we are solving together so for that definitely the time required for this is quite more so the more computational time is required fem is applied to approximation of mathematical model of a system at the end whatever the solutions we get these are approximate solutions which are not exact solutions so that is of the disadvantage a very powerful computer and efficient and reliable fem software are essential in order to get the final solution of fea problem right and above all experience and judgment are needed in order to construct a good finite element model we are given with some problems we are given with problem statement in which we got geometry we got boundary condition we got all other properties but there are several several governing equations which are eligible for our problem so which are the equations are good for our problem one has to know so there the judgment and experience plays a vital role so for that the experience and judgment are much needed everyone is not that expertise everyone do not have that much expertise in fea so one has to learn the prerequisite subjects in order to to make the judgment while making the mathematical model for our problem now coming to the last which are the software you can use for solving any of your problem first that is ansys then simulia elastina hypermesh proi cosmos with that there are many more softwares available in the market and still they are coming many of the companies are making many many softwares for fea solving because fea and cfd these two are playing vital role for simulation analysis of any components so amongst that i find uh, ansys and simulia very easy because i have been using these two softwares for uh, quite a long time so i would recommend uh, these two softwares but other four are same as uh, same easy for as the ansys and simulia but i have i've been using these two so i have to recommend these two software otherwise all softwares are very good so uh, that's it for uh, today's session thank you for your patient uh, listening in the coming uh, lectures i would be discussing more and more about fea the steps involved in fea what are the needs and one by one we are going to solve some of the problems if you have if you got any queries regarding to the session or regarding fea you can 
drop your email, drop your queries at the email ID given over here. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience.